In the fertile lands between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, the ancient Mesopotamian civilizations laid the foundations for human progress and innovation. The birthplace of the enigmatic Sumerians, this region, known as the Cradle of Civilization, cultivated not only the seeds of agriculture, but also the roots of knowledge that would shape the course of human history. From the bustling city-states of Mesopotamia to the ingenious base 60 number system that still influences our modern world, the legacy of these ancient innovators continues to captivate and inspire us as we delve into their remarkable contributions and unravel the mysteries of our past. Welcome to life's biggest questions. Let's dive into Sumerian history. Mesopotamia, often referred to as the Cradle of Civilization, was located between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in present-day Iraq. This region's fertile lands and abundant water supply allowed for the development of advanced agriculture, paving the way for the growth of complex societies. Mesopotamia was home to several notable civilizations, including the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, and the Akkadians. These societies thrived in a region known as the Fertile Crescent, an area stretching from the Nile River in Egypt to the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in Mesopotamia. This crescent-shaped region had a favorable climate and fertile soil, allowing early civilizations to develop advanced agricultural techniques and support dense populations. Mesopotamia's position at the crossroads of Asia, Africa and Europe made it a hub for trade and cultural exchange. The region was a melting pot of different peoples, languages and ideas, which fueled the development of new technologies, art forms and social structures. Around 4,500 BCE, the Sumerians established the first known urban civilization in Mesopotamia. They built city-states, each with its own unique culture, political structure and religious beliefs. Some of the most famous city-states were Ur, Uruk and Eridu. The Sumerians are known for their impressive architectural feats, such as the construction of monumental temples called ziggurats. These stepped pyramids served as religious centers and were dedicated to various Sumerian gods. The Sumerians were pioneers in many fields, from agriculture and writing to mathematics and law. They developed a complex system of government and administration, which allowed them to maintain control over their vast territories and maintain a high level of organization within their city-states. The Sumerians were a highly innovative civilization that made numerous contributions to human progress. Their most significant achievement was the development of cuneiform, one of the earliest forms of writing. Cuneiform allowed the Sumerians to record a wide range of information from administrative records and legal codes to literature and personal correspondence. This system of writing laid the foundation for the preservation and transmission of knowledge, which is essential for any advanced civilization. In the field of mathematics, the Sumerians made several groundbreaking contributions. They developed a base 60 number system, which is still used today for measuring time and angles. This system allowed the Sumerians to perform complex calculations, which were crucial for their advancements in agriculture, engineering and astronomy. They also invented geometry, enabling them to plan and construct elaborate architectural structures. The base 60 number system, also known as the sexagesimal system, was developed by the ancient Sumerians around 2000 BCE. It is a positional numeral system that uses a base of 60, as opposed to the base 10 decimal system that we use today. This means that in the base 60 system, there are 60 unique digits, from 0 to 59, used to represent numbers, and each place value in a numeral is a power of 60. The exact reasons behind the development of the base 60 system are not entirely clear, but it is believed that the Sumerians chose this base due to its divisibility by several smaller numbers. The number 60 is divisible by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30 and 60, making it a highly versatile number for various calculations and measurements. One of the most significant applications of the base 60 system in ancient Sumerian society was in the field of astronomy. The Sumerians used the sexagesimal system to measure time, dividing the day into 24 hours, each hour into 60 minutes, and each minute into 60 seconds. This division is still used today in our modern timekeeping system. The base 60 system was also used in geometry and the measurement of angles. The circle was divided into 360 degrees, a multiple of 60. 
and each degree was further subdivided into 60 minutes and each minute into 60 seconds. This division of angles is still used today in fields such as navigation and cartography. The ancient Babylonians who succeeded the Sumerians also used the base 60 system for their calculations. They developed a more sophisticated sexagesimal positional system, which included a placeholder symbol to represent an empty position. This innovation made their numeral system more efficient and easier to use for complex calculations. The ancient Sumerians and Babylonians, despite existing in different periods of time, both utilized the base 60 number system. This shared mathematical framework can be attributed to the cultural and intellectual continuity that persisted in the Mesopotamian region throughout its history. The Babylonians, who rose to prominence around 1900 BCE, succeeded the Sumerians as the dominant civilization in Mesopotamia. They adopted many aspects of Sumerian culture, including their language, which was used as a scholarly and liturgical language, religious beliefs, artistic styles, and most importantly, their mathematical knowledge. By inheriting the base 60 number system from the Sumerians, the Babylonians were able to build upon and refine this mathematical framework. The Babylonians made several improvements to the sexagesimal system, such as the introduction of a placeholder symbol, akin to the modern concept of zero, which allowed them to represent empty positions in their numerals. This innovation made the base 60 system more efficient and easier to use for complex calculations, leading to advancements in fields like astronomy, engineering and geometry. The base 60 system continued to be used throughout the ancient world and had a lasting impact on the development of mathematics and science. Although our modern number system is primarily based on the decimal system, remnants of the sexagesimal system can still be found in various aspects of our daily lives, such as timekeeping and the measurement of angles. Sumerian astronomers made significant strides in understanding the cosmos. They developed a lunar calendar that divided the year into 12 months based on the cycles of the moon. They observed the movements of the planets and stars, creating the first known star catalogues and accurately predicting celestial events such as eclipses. Their astronomical observations also influenced their religious beliefs and practices, as they ascribed divine significance to various celestial bodies. In the realm of law and government, the Sumerians laid the groundwork for modern legal systems and centralized administration. They established a complex hierarchy of officials and bureaucrats responsible for overseeing various aspects of daily life, such as trade, agriculture and public works. The Sumerians were among the first to implement a legal code, with the Code of Onamu being one of the earliest examples. This code covered a wide range of topics, including property rights, trade regulations and criminal punishments, demonstrating the complexity of Sumerian society. The Sumerians also made considerable advancements in engineering and technology. They are credited with inventing the wheel, the plow, the sailboat, and even the concept of the arch, which revolutionized construction and transportation. These innovations enabled them to build monumental structures, such as the ziggurats, and facilitated the growth of trade networks, both within Mesopotamia and beyond. In agriculture, the Sumerians developed sophisticated irrigation techniques that allowed them to harness the water resources of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. They constructed canals, levees and dams, enabling them to divert water to their fields and create a surplus of food. This agricultural surplus supported a growing population and allowed for the development of specialized occupations such as craftsmen, merchants and priests. The Sumerians were also skilled artisans, creating exquisite works of art in various forms, including sculpture, pottery and jewellery. They used a variety of materials such as clay, stone and precious metals to create stunning pieces that showcased their craftsmanship and attention to detail. Sumerian art often depicted scenes from their religious beliefs, daily life and mythological stories, providing insight into their culture and worldview. As we reflect upon the fascinating journey through the cradle of civilization, we are reminded of the astounding achievements and pioneering spirit of the ancient Mesopotamians. Welcome to our journey through history as we explore the fascinating story of the Babylonian Empire and its connections to the Anunnaki, a group of powerful deities in ancient Mesopotamian mythology. The Babylonian Empire was one of the greatest civilizations of the ancient world, known for its monumental architecture, scientific achievements and influential legal code. 
But before we delve into the incredible accomplishments of this empire, let's start by exploring the Anunnaki's role in shaping the religious and cultural landscape of ancient Mesopotamia. Hello and welcome to life's biggest questions. Now that's been said, let's continue. The Anunnaki were a group of gods and goddesses worshipped by the various cultures of ancient Mesopotamia, including the Sumerians, Akkadians and Babylonians. As a descendants of the Akkadians, the Babylonians inherited many aspects of their predecessors' religious beliefs, including the veneration of the Anunnaki. These deities played a significant role in the lives of the Babylonians, who believed that the gods controlled the forces of nature and the fate of humanity. The Anunnaki were invoked in prayers, rituals, and religious texts, and their stories were passed down through generations in the form of myths and legends. And now, with the foundation of the Anunnaki's influence in mind, let's explore the rise, achievements, and eventual fall of the Babylonian Empire. The rise of the Babylonian Empire can be traced back to the early 2nd millennium BCE, during a time of great political upheaval in Mesopotamia. The region was divided into several city-states, each ruled by its own king, and conflicts between these city-states were common. It was in this turbulent environment that the Babylonian Empire began to take shape. The city of Babylon itself was founded around 1894 BCE by the Amorite king Sumu Abum. However, it was under the rule of Hammurabi, reigned 1792 to 1750 BCE, the sixth king of the first Babylonian dynasty, that the empire truly began to emerge as a major power in the region. Hammurabi was an ambitious ruler who sought to expand his kingdom's influence and territory. Through a combination of diplomatic alliances, strategic marriages and military conquests, he managed to bring the majority of Mesopotamia under Babylonian control. One of Hammurabi's most notable military achievements was the conquest of the rival city-state of Larsa, which gave him control over the economically important trade routes along the Euphrates River. He also conquered other neighboring city-states such as Eshnunna, Mari, and Elam, further expanding his empire's reach. During his reign, Hammurabi not only focused on military expansion, but also on the internal development and administration of his kingdom. He implemented a series of reforms aimed at improving the lives of his subjects, such as the construction of irrigation canals to enhance agricultural production and the establishment of a centralized bureaucracy to govern the empire more efficiently. Hammurabi is perhaps best known for his legal code, the Code of Hammurabi, which was a comprehensive set of laws covering various aspects of daily life, such as trade, property rights and family law. This code, inscribed on a stone stele, is considered one of the earliest and most complete legal codes in human history and provides a valuable insight into the society, values and governance of the Babylonian Empire. After Hammurabi's death, his successors continued to expand and consolidate the empire's power, even as it faced various challenges from both internal and external forces. Over the centuries, the Babylonian Empire would experience periods of decline and resurgence, marked by the rise and fall of different dynasties and rulers. The Babylonian Empire, which thrived during the 2nd and 1st millennia BCE, left a significant legacy through its numerous achievements. These accomplishments spanned various fields, including architecture, science, mathematics, literature and law. Here are some of the most notable Babylonian achievements. Architecture. Babylon was known for its grandiose architecture, including the city walls, the Ishtar Gate, the Etamenanki, a massive ziggurat temple, and the fabled Hanging Gardens of Babylon. The Hanging Gardens, considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, were a series of terraces filled with exotic plants and trees, supported by complex irrigation systems. Babylonian astronomers made substantial advancements in the field of astronomy. They meticulously observed and documented celestial phenomena, leading to the development of the first known system for predicting the future positions of planets. The Babylonians also created the lunar calendar, which divided the year into 12 months based on the cycles of the moon. Mathematics The Babylonians pioneered the base 60 numeral system, which is still used today in our measurements of time, minutes and seconds, and angles, degrees, minutes and seconds. This advanced mathematical system allowed the Babylonians to perform complex calculations required for engineering projects, solve various practical problems, and even calculate the square root and cube root of numbers. 
The Babylonians used the cuneiform script, a system of writing that used wedge-shaped marks made on clay tablets. They made significant contributions to literature, producing works such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the world's oldest known works of literature. Babylonian scribes also created extensive libraries, which housed vast collections of religious, historical and scientific texts. The Code of Hammurabi. Under the rule of King Hammurabi, the Babylonians established one of the earliest known legal codes. The Code of Hammurabi, inscribed on a large stone stele, covered a wide range of civil and criminal matters. It provided a detailed account of the social structure, values and legal rights of the people living in the Babylonian Empire. Medicine. Babylonian physicians were skilled in diagnosing and treating various ailments. They used a combination of empirical observations, medical texts and incantations to treat their patients. While their understanding of the human body was limited by today's standards, the Babylonians made significant contributions to the development of medical knowledge. The Babylonian Empire was a center of trade and commerce in the ancient world, benefiting from its strategic location along the Euphrates River. Babylonian merchants traded with other civilizations in the region, exchanging goods such as textiles, grains, metals and spices. These achievements showcase the ingenuity and creativity of the Babylonian people, who left a lasting impact on the fields of science, art and culture. The legacy of the Babylonian Empire continues to influence our modern world, as we build upon the foundations laid by this ancient civilization. The decline and fall of the Babylonian Empire were a result of a combination of internal and external factors that weakened the empire over time, ultimately leading to its collapse. After the death of Nebuchadnezzar II in 562 BCE, the Babylonian Empire experienced a period of political instability marked by a series of weak and ineffective rulers. This instability weakened the empire's ability to govern its vast territories effectively and left it vulnerable to external threats. Economic Decline The Babylonian Empire's economy relied heavily on agriculture and trade. However, as the empire expanded, it faced challenges in maintaining its vast irrigation systems, leading to decreased agricultural productivity. Uh, additionally, competition from other regional powers disrupted trade routes, further weakening the economy. The expansion of the Babylonian Empire brought with it the incorporation of diverse ethnic groups and cultures. As the empire declined, tensions between these groups began to rise, leading to social unrest and weakening the unity of the empire. Ah, rise of the Persians. The rise of the Persian Empire under Cyrus the Great presented a significant external threat to the Babylonian Empire. The Persians were a powerful and ambitious force, and they began to expand their territories at the expense of the Babylonians. Fall of Babylon to the Persians. In 539 BCE, the Persian army led by Cyrus the Great marched on the city of Babylon. The Babylonians, weakened by internal strife and economic decline, were unable to mount a strong defense against the invading forces. The Persian army entered the city without much resistance, marking the end of the Babylonian Empire. After the conquest, Cyrus the Great incorporated the Babylonian territories into his expanding Persian Empire and treated the conquered people with relative tolerance and respect. Hellenistic Period The conquest of the Persian Empire by Alexander the Great in 331 BCE marked the beginning of the Hellenistic Period in Mesopotamia. The region was subsequently absorbed into the Seleucid Empire, one of the successor states of Alexander's empire, which led to the gradual decline of Babylonian culture and influence. The rise of the Parthian and Sassanid empires further diminished the remnants of Babylonian culture in the region. These empires, which controlled Mesopotamia at different points in time, introduced new cultural, religious and political influences that would come to dominate the region leading to the eventual disappearance of the distinct Babylonian identity. The decline and fall of the Babylonian Empire were due to a combination of internal factors, such as political instability, economic decline and social unrest, as well as external pressures, such as the rise of powerful neighboring empires. The fall of Babylon to the Persians marked the end of the Babylonian Empire and subsequent conquests and cultural shifts in the region led to the gradual disappearance of Babylonian culture and influence.
The Babylonians, like other Mesopotamian civilizations such as the Sumerians and Akkadians, believed in a variety of gods that included the Anunnaki. The lasting legacy of the Anunnaki and the Babylonian Empire can be seen in several aspects. Mythology and religion. The Anunnaki played a central role in Mesopotamian religious beliefs, shaping the spiritual lives of the Babylonians and influencing their worldview. Many of the gods in the Babylonian pantheon, such as Marduk, Enlil, and Ea, were associated with the Anunnaki. These gods were believed to have immense power over the natural world, and their influence can still be seen in the religious and mythological texts that have survived to this day. Creation of Mankind According to ancient Mesopotamian mythology, the Anunnaki created human beings to serve as their laborers. The creation of humanity by the gods is a common theme in many ancient cultures, and the Anunnaki's role in this process has left a lasting impression on the cultural memory of the region. The mythology and religious beliefs of the Babylonian Empire, including the stories of the Anunnaki, influenced later civilizations in the region, such as the Assyrians, and even spread to other parts of the ancient world. For example, some of the stories from Mesopotamian mythology, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, have parallels in the Bible and other ancient texts. Art and Architecture The Anunnaki were often depicted in Babylonian art, including statues, reliefs and frescoes. These artistic representations of the gods reflect the importance of the Anunnaki in Babylonian society and provide a glimpse into the religious beliefs and practices of the time. The Anunnaki have captured the imagination of modern researchers and writers, leading to various interpretations and theories about their role in human history. Some suggest that the Anunnaki were actually extraterrestrial beings who visited Earth in ancient times, while others see them as symbolic representations of natural forces or aspects of human consciousness. These modern theories, while speculative, demonstrate the enduring fascination with the Anunnaki and their potential influence on human civilization. The legacy of the Anunnaki and the Babylonian Empire can be seen in various aspects of culture, religion, art and even modern theories about the origins of humanity. As a central element of Mesopotamian mythology, the Anunnaki continue to capture the imagination of scholars and enthusiasts alike, demonstrating the impact of ancient Babylonian beliefs and achievements on our understanding of human history. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of the Babylonian Empire and its connection to the Anunnaki. Our world is filled with fascinating tales and myths that sometimes seem too remarkable to be true. But what if there was a grain of truth in them? What if we were actually put on Earth by a race of ancient extraterrestrial beings known as the Anunnaki? What if these beings were from a mysterious planet called Nibiru, also known as Planet X? And why did they need gold so badly? This journey we're embarking on today might seem like science fiction, but let's delve deep and find out. Welcome to life's biggest questions. Now let's continue on, shall we? Let's dive into the intriguing lore of the Anunnaki and their home, Planet X, or as the ancient Sumerians called it, Nibiru. According to ancient texts, Nibiru was a planet in our solar system with a highly elliptical orbit, entering the inner solar system only once every 3,600 years. But why does this matter? Well, these time frames align surprisingly well with various significant periods in Earth's history. The Anunnaki were supposedly a highly advanced civilization, possessing technology and knowledge far beyond what we believe was available at the time. Some theorists even suggest that they had the capability to traverse the vast distances of space, which is how they found their way to Earth. But what's even more fascinating is the reason behind their interstellar journey. The story goes that their planet's atmosphere was deteriorating and they needed a solution. Continuing our journey into the heart of the Anunnaki and Planet X story, we can't help but marvel at the extensive mythology surrounding their civilization. The Anunnaki were believed to be the gods or heavenly beings in Sumerian culture, standing at the apex of their cosmology. They were said to have descended from the sky, providing knowledge and guidance to the primitive human societies of the time. But as we unravel more about the Anunnaki, we find that they weren't just spiritual or divine entities. They were described as real, tangible beings with distinct personalities, desires and conflicts. Their interactions with each other, as well as with humanity, were documented in numerous Sumerian texts. 
Their impact was profound, shaping the trajectory of human civilization in more ways than one. The tales depict them as beings who manipulated DNA, advanced architecture, mathematics, astronomy and agriculture, implying a scientific knowledge base much broader than was available to humans at that time. But as intriguing as these stories are, they also raise many questions. Why would such an advanced civilization need help from primitive humans? Why Earth? And what does gold have to do with all of this? These questions might seem outlandish or fantastical, but when we delve deeper into the lore and the science behind these theories, we find a universe of possibilities that might just make us rethink our understanding of ancient civilizations and our place in the cosmos. Moving deeper into our exploration, we come across one of the most intriguing theories about the Anunnaki, their alleged role in the creation of humans. Now, according to various interpretations of ancient Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki did not just stumble upon humans on Earth. They played an active part in our creation. But why? As the story goes, the Anunnaki, living on a distant planet, Nibiru, with a long elliptical orbit around the Sun, were facing a crisis. Their planet's atmosphere was deteriorating and they needed a solution to save it. This is where gold comes into the picture. Gold particles were to be used in their atmosphere to repair the damage. However, mining for gold was labor-intensive and required a workforce. Unable to meet this demand with their population, the Anunnaki turned to Earth, rich in the gold they so desperately needed. But there was a problem. The work was hard, and there was no workforce readily available. So they decided to create one. Using their advanced knowledge in genetics, they allegedly manipulated the DNA of the existing hominids on Earth, gradually leading to the emergence of Homo sapiens, us. We were, as per this theory, originally designed as a race of workers created to mine gold for the Anunnaki. As outlandish as this theory may sound, proponents argue that it provides an alternative explanation for the sudden evolutionary leap that resulted in the appearance of modern humans, but it also opens up a whole new world of ethical and philosophical questions. What is the true nature of our existence? Are we more than just workers for extraterrestrial beings? If the Anunnaki created us, who created them? Taking a closer look at the narrative, we stumble upon a rather interesting aspect, the fixation on gold. Now, gold is a fascinating element. It doesn't corrode, it's malleable, and it conducts electricity. But why would a distant planet, Nibiru, need gold? According to the Anunnaki theory, Nibiru's atmosphere was in crisis. The planet's life-sustaining qualities were being compromised, it's said that the Anunnaki, known to be technologically advanced, figured out a possible solution to this problem. Their plan was to suspend particles of gold into Nibiru's atmosphere, hoping that these particles would form a protective layer, reflecting sunlight and thus restoring the balance of their atmosphere. This puts gold in a unique position. For us on Earth, it has been used as a symbol of wealth and power, but for the Anunnaki, it was apparently the key to environmental stability, the solution to a planetary crisis. It was not about luxury or status, but survival. Proponents of the theory point out that gold's unique properties make it plausible as a potential atmospheric shield. Its resistance to corrosion and ability to reflect sunlight could theoretically help restore an atmosphere, although such a process would require technology far beyond what we currently possess. It's also interesting to note that gold has been revered and sought after by almost every civilization on Earth. Some theorists argue that this universal fascination with gold might have been implanted in us by our alleged creators, the Anunnaki. And if this is true, does our continued obsession with gold suggest a lingering subconscious connection to our supposed extraterrestrial origins? Getting deeper into the allure of gold, what makes gold so special? It's a question that piques our curiosity. After all, gold is just a shiny metal, isn't it? Well, not quite. Gold, as we've already established, is an extraordinary element. It doesn't corrode or tarnish like other metals, making it last virtually forever. It's also highly malleable and ductile. A single ounce of gold can be beaten into a sheet covering 300 square feet or drawn out into a wire 60 miles long. From an aesthetic perspective, gold's lustrous warm glow has been universally cherished for its beauty. Yet, its value extends far beyond its appearance. 
Gold is an excellent conductor of electricity and is highly resistant to most acids, making it incredibly useful in numerous industries from electronics to dentistry. In the context of the Anunnaki theory, the physical properties of gold made it an ideal candidate for repairing Nibiru's atmosphere, but gold's significance goes beyond its physical characteristics. In many ancient cultures, gold was associated with the divine or the gods, possibly due to its seemingly immortal nature and radiant shine. This raises an intriguing question. Could the cultural importance of gold be a remnant of our supposed Anunnaki creator's influence? When we look at the world today, the importance of gold remains. It backs our currencies, it's an essential component of our electronics, and it's a symbol of love and commitment in our jewelry. Is all of this a mere coincidence, or could it be a sign of a more profound cosmic connection? It's something to ponder about. In the realm of physics and chemistry, gold is an elemental superstar. It's one of the least reactive elements on the periodic table, meaning it doesn't easily combine with other elements to form compounds. This makes it resistant to tarnishing and rusting. A gold artifact buried for thousands of years will shine as if it was made yesterday. Gold's inertness is one reason it's biocompatible. It doesn't react with human tissue, making it suitable for medical uses, like fillings and implants. Gold nanoparticles are even being explored for use in cancer treatments. Its ability to reflect heat and radiation also has practical applications. We use gold foil to protect astronauts and their spacecraft from the intense radiation of space, and gold coatings are used on the windows of large buildings to reflect sunlight and keep interiors cool. Beyond the physical, gold has an undeniable psychological allure. It's been a symbol of wealth and power for millennia. In ancient cultures, gold's enduring shine led people to associate it with the divine and the eternal. This allure isn't lost on the Anunnaki theorists who propose that the ancient Sumerians' reverence for gold was influenced by these celestial beings. They suggest that gold was not only desired for its physical properties, but also as a symbol of divine power and interstellar capability. The golden thread that ties our history, mythology and technology together is fascinating. Whether gold's appeal comes from our alleged Anunnaki origins or simply from the element's unique properties, one thing is clear. Gold has shaped and continues to shape our world in profound ways. The Sumerians were the creators of one of the earliest known civilizations, establishing urban development, governance systems and one of the first written languages, cuneiform script. According to proponents of the Anunnaki theory, this advanced knowledge did not evolve independently but was given to them by these celestial beings. The Anunnaki, if we follow the theory, brought the Sumerians advanced knowledge in numerous fields. They were said to have taught them agriculture, making the Sumerians among the first to transition from a nomadic lifestyle to settled farming communities. The Sumerians' revolutionary irrigation systems which allowed them to thrive in the harsh, arid environment of Mesopotamia, are theorized by some as Anunnaki knowledge. In addition, the Anunnaki supposedly introduced advanced architectural techniques. The ziggurats, towering stepped pyramids that dot the Mesopotamian landscape, are believed by some theorists to be evidence of this cosmic architectural education. The complexity and scale of these structures indeed suggest an advanced understanding of construction and engineering. Some theories even suggest that the Anunnaki imparted the early foundations of laws and justice, leading to the creation of the Code of Hammurabi, one of the oldest known legal codes. The complexity of this legal system, encompassing various aspects of daily life, is seen by some as a sign of Anunnaki influence. The Anunnaki are also thought to have shared advanced astronomical knowledge. The Sumerians were skilled astronomers, accurately charting celestial bodies and events. Their understanding of the cosmos was surprisingly advanced for the time, with some theorists suggesting that this knowledge was passed down from the Anunnaki. So, there you have it. The story of the Anunnaki and Planet X is a captivating blend of ancient mythology, celestial mechanics and the quest for gold. It's a tale that asks us to reconsider our place in the universe and the very history of humanity. Today, let's travel back in time all the way to ancient Mesopotamia, to the cradle of civilization. Imagine a world where gods walked among mortals, where epic heroes battled fearsome beasts, and where the quest for immortality was not just a philosophical question, but a literal journey. Welcome to the world of Gilgamesh, 
a legendary figure whose epic story is one of the earliest and most profound narratives in human history. Are you ready to embark on this epic adventure? Now, the Epic of Gilgamesh isn't a singular, cohesive book like we might imagine today. Instead, it's a collection of stories and poems that evolved and changed over time, eventually forming the epic we know today. These tales were inscribed on a series of 12 clay tablets in the Akkadian language, with the most complete version dating to the 7th century BCE from the library of Ashurbanipal in Nineveh. Gilgamesh is a fascinating character. Legend has it he was the king of Uruk, a Sumerian city-state located in modern-day Iraq. Now, Uruk was a big deal back in the day. We're talking about one of the world's first major cities, the origin of writing, and a hub of culture and trade in ancient Mesopotamia. But let's get back to Gilgamesh. He was described as being two-thirds god and one-third human. This unique lineage gave him superhuman strength and wisdom, making him a formidable leader. However, his divine status didn't shield him from human struggles. In fact, much of the epic revolves around Gilgamesh wrestling with the concept of mortality and the limitations of human existence. Interestingly, even though he was a demigod, Gilgamesh was not a perfect ruler. Ancient texts describe him as a tyrant who imposed his will on his subjects. In fact, his behavior was so oppressive that the gods created Enkidu, a wild man, to challenge him and divert his attention from his subjects. Little did the gods know this decision would change the course of Gilgamesh's life in ways they could not predict. The epic of Gilgamesh is not just a tale of adventure. It's a journey into the human condition, exploring themes of friendship, grief, the pursuit of immortality, and the acceptance of our mortal nature. Its narrative is grand and its implications profound, offering a window into the human soul and the complexities of life. The bond between Gilgamesh and Enkidu is one of the most compelling aspects of the epic. Remember, Enkidu was created by the gods as a kind of counterbalance to Gilgamesh's tyrannical rule. Originally, Enkidu lived among the animals in the wilderness, uncorrupted by civilization. However, after a series of events, he was introduced to human society and eventually found his way to Uruk, where he challenged Gilgamesh to a wrestling match. This moment marked a turning point in Gilgamesh's life. The match was fierce, and although Gilgamesh won, he recognized in Enkidu a worthy friend and companion. This was the start of an extraordinary friendship, one that changed Gilgamesh and ultimately shaped his destiny. Together, Gilgamesh and Enkidu embarked on a series of heroic adventures, from slaying the monstrous Humbaba who guarded the cedar forest, to killing the Bull of Heaven sent by the goddess Ishtar as a punishment for rejecting her advances. These exploits showcased their courage, strength and companionship, solidifying their friendship. However, the epic also delves into the profound emotional transformation of Gilgamesh through his relationship with Enkidu. Gilgamesh, who was once an arrogant and self-centered king, began to exhibit empathy, humility and wisdom. This transition is most apparent when Enkidu falls ill and dies as a consequence of their adventures. Enkidu's death sent Gilgamesh into a profound grief and fear of his own mortality. He set out on a quest to find the secret of immortality, a journey that would lead him to the depths of despair and the heights of enlightenment. Through their friendship, Enkidu not only humanized Gilgamesh but also gave him the impetus to embark on the most significant journey of his life. The friendship between Gilgamesh and Enkidu is a testament to the transformative power of companionship a theme that still resonates with us today. Enkidu's death was a turning point for Gilgamesh, sparking a fear of his own mortality. This fear was so overwhelming that it led him on an epic journey to discover the secret of eternal life. Now, this wasn't a simple journey. This was a quest that took Gilgamesh to the ends of the earth, confronting monsters, gods and the depths of his own despair. One of the most memorable parts of this journey is Gilgamesh's encounter with a man who was granted eternal life by the gods. He is often compared to Noah from the Bible due to the similarities in their stories. Both were warned of a great flood by a god and built a boat to save themselves, their families and all kinds of animals. Gilgamesh hoped to learn the secret of immortality. However, they informed him that immortality was not meant for humans. He told Gilgamesh a story about a plant that could restore youth but even after Gilgamesh retrieved it, the plant was stolen by a serpent while he bathed, symbolizing the futility of his quest. Despite his failures, Gilgamesh's search for immortality is an exploration of a universal human fear and desire. The fear of death, 
and the longing for eternal life. His journey reflects our own struggles with mortality and the realization that death is an inevitable part of life. It's a humbling reminder of our human condition and the impermanence of our existence. Gilgamesh's journey eventually led him back to Uruk, where he found a different kind of immortality. Not through divine intervention or magical plants, but through his deeds, his city, and the stories that would be told about him for thousands of years to come. This, perhaps, is the true message of the epic of Gilgamesh, that our actions, our contributions, and the memories we leave behind are our true immortality. The epic of Gilgamesh is much more than an adventure story. It's a profound exploration of themes that continue to resonate with us today. The power of friendship, the quest for immortality, the confrontation with mortality, and the human desire to leave a lasting legacy. The friendship between Gilgamesh and Enkidu is central to the narrative, reflecting the power of human connection to shape our lives. Their bond changes Gilgamesh from an arrogant ruler to a compassionate leader, demonstrating how relationships can lead to personal growth and transformation. The theme of mortality is equally prominent. From Enkidu's death to Gilgamesh's quest for immortality, the epic confronts the inevitability of death. It grapples with the human fear of oblivion, our longing for eternal life, and ultimately our acceptance of our mortal condition. The epic of Gilgamesh also explores the desire to leave a lasting legacy. For Gilgamesh, this comes not in the form of immortality, but through his deeds in the city he built. It's a powerful reminder that our actions, our contributions, and the memories we leave behind are our true legacy. The influence of the Epic of Gilgamesh extends far beyond its time. As one of the oldest known works of literature, it has shaped countless narratives and myths that followed. Its themes have found echoes in biblical stories, uh, Greek mythology, and modern literature. It has inspired operas, novels, and films. Its exploration of friendship, mortality, and legacy continues to resonate with us. While Gilgamesh is often described as a mythical hero, he may have been a real person. Some historians believe that Gilgamesh was a historical king of the city of Uruk, who later became a figure of myth and legend. Records from other ancient civilizations mention a king named Gilgamesh, and archaeological evidence suggests that Uruk was an important city in ancient Mesopotamia. In the epic, Gilgamesh is described as being two-thirds god and one-third human. His mother was a goddess, and his father was a mortal king. This divine heritage gives Gilgamesh superhuman strength and physical beauty, but it also sets him apart from other people and leaves him unsatisfied with his mortal life. The epic of Gilgamesh is essentially a journey of self-discovery. After the death of his friend Enkidu, Gilgamesh embarks on a quest to find the secret of immortality. He travels to the ends of the earth, battles supernatural creatures, and even ventures into the underworld. Although he fails to achieve physical immortality, he gains wisdom and understanding about life, death, and the importance of leaving a lasting legacy. One of the most famous parts of the Epic of Gilgamesh is the story of the Great Flood, which predates the biblical story of Noah's Ark by hundreds of years. In the Epic, Gilgamesh meets Utnapishtim, a man who was granted immortality by the gods after he and his wife survived a great flood that wiped out the rest of humanity. This story has led some to speculate about possible connections between the two flood narratives. The epic of Gilgamesh has had a lasting impact on literature and culture. Its themes of friendship, the quest for immortality, and the struggle with mortality are still relevant today. The epic has inspired countless other works of literature and has been translated into many languages. It continues to be studied and admired for its rich symbolism, complex characters, and exploration of universal human experiences. Early in the epic, Gilgamesh is portrayed as a tyrant. His strength and vigor lead him to oppress the people of Uruk. He sets young men to endless labor, competes with them in sports to the point of exhaustion, and disrupts families. This behavior sets the stage for the creation of Enkidu, initially a wild man, who is civilized and becomes a match for Gilgamesh, serving both as a friend and a balance to his excessive energy. Dreams and their interpretations play a crucial role in the epic of Gilgamesh. For instance, before meeting Enkidu, Gilgamesh has prophetic dreams that are interpreted by his mother. Later, during their journey to the cedar forest to confront the demon Humbaba, both Gilgamesh and Enkidu experience ominous dreams. These dream sequences highlight the significance of divine intervention and fate in the characters' lives. 
The Epic of Gilgamesh is one of the earliest known examples of literature. It's written in a poetic form known as epic poetry and is composed of Sumerian verses. The influence of the Epic of Gilgamesh on subsequent literary traditions, especially the Homeric epics, the Iliad and the Odyssey, has been noted by many scholars. The theme of a hero's journey, friendship and quest for immortality are motifs that continue in many forms of literary tradition. For centuries, the Epic of Gilgamesh was forgotten until archaeological excavations in the mid-19th century unearthed the ancient city of Nineveh, including the library of Assyrian king Ashurbanipal. Among the thousands of clay tablets, scholars found the Epic of Gilgamesh. It took decades to decipher, translate and understand the epic, and it wasn't until the late 20th century that a relatively complete and accurate version of the story was available to the public. The rediscovery of this ancient epic has provided invaluable insights into ancient Mesopotamian culture and literature. And there you have it, the Epic of Gilgamesh, a tale of friendship, a quest for immortality, a confrontation with the inevitable reality of death and the human desire to leave a lasting legacy. It's a story that has shaped our collective imagination for millennia and its themes continue to resonate in our own lives. So, next time you ponder your legacy, your mortality, or the power of your relationships, remember the tale of Gilgamesh and his epic journey. It's a testament to the enduring power of stories and the timeless nature of the human condition. In the ancient lands of Mesopotamia, the Assyrians emerged as a powerful and highly advanced civilization, forging an empire that would leave a lasting impact on the history of the region. Their prowess in warfare, innovative architectural feats and intricate artistic expressions were just a few of the hallmarks of this Iron Age society. Intriguingly, the Assyrians shared a deep connection with the Anunnaki, a group of deities revered throughout ancient Mesopotamian cultures. This divine relationship not only shaped their religious beliefs and practices, but also influenced their political structure, art and literature leaving a fascinating and complex legacy for future generations to uncover. Hello and welcome to Life's Biggest Questions. Let's continue this journey, shall we? The Assyrian Empire had its roots in the city-state of Asher, located on the banks of the Tigris River in modern-day northern Iraq. The city was named after the chief deity of the Assyrian pantheon, Asher, who was believed to grant the Assyrian kings their divine mandate to rule. By the late 3rd millennium BCE, Asher had grown into a significant trading hub, benefiting from its strategic location along the Tigris River and its role in the lucrative trade network that connected Mesopotamia with Anatolia and the Mediterranean world. During the 2nd millennium BCE, Ashur and its surrounding region came under the control of various Mesopotamian powers, such as the 3rd dynasty of Ur and the old Babylonian Empire. However, by the 14th century BCE, the Assyrians had managed to reassert their independence and expand their influence under the rule of King Asher Ubalit, thus Asher Ubalit. Uh, Fast is credited with founding the Middle Assyrian Empire and embarking on an aggressive campaign of conquest, which saw the annexation of neighboring territories and the establishment of a pattern of military expansion that would define the Assyrian Empire for centuries to come. The Assyrian Empire continued to grow and consolidate its power under a series of strong and ambitious rulers, including Adad-Nirari I, Tukulti Ninurta I, and Tiglath Pilsa I. These kings implemented administrative reforms to centralize power and enhance their control over the expanding empire. They also invested heavily in infrastructure projects such as irrigation systems and road networks, which facilitated the movement of goods and people and enabled the efficient administration of the empire's vast territories. The zenith of Assyrian power came during the Neo-Assyrian period, which began in the late 10th century BCE with the reign of Adad-Nirari II. This period saw a rapid expansion of the empire under rulers like Ashurnasirpal II, Shalmaneser III, Tiglath-Pilsa III, Sargon II, Sennacherib, Esarhaddon and Ashurbanipal. At its peak, the Assyrian Empire stretched from the Persian Gulf in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west and from the borders of modern-day Iran in the north to Egypt in the south. Throughout their history, the Assyrians maintained an aggressive policy of expansion and conquest, often employing brutal tactics to subdue their enemies and maintain control over their vast territories. 
This policy allowed them to amass significant wealth and resources, which in turn fueled their continued growth and dominance in the ancient Near East. The Assyrian military was a key factor in the empire's rise to prominence and the backbone of its success. Its strength lay in its discipline, organization, advanced weaponry and innovative strategies. The following elements contributed to the Assyrians' fearsome reputation on the battlefield. The Assyrians were among the first to use iron extensively in their weapons, giving them a significant advantage over their enemies. Iron was stronger and more durable than bronze, allowing the Assyrians to produce superior swords, spears and arrowheads. This technological edge enabled them to overcome adversaries who were still reliant on bronze weaponry. The Assyrian army was highly organized with a clear chain of command and specialized units, including infantry, cavalry, archers and charioteers. This organization allowed for efficient communication and coordination on the battlefield, ensuring that the Assyrians could effectively execute complex tactics and maneuvers. The Assyrians were masters of siege warfare, employing innovative techniques and technologies to breach fortified cities. They utilized siege towers, battering rams and sappers to undermine city walls. The Assyrians also employed psychological warfare, such as displaying the severed heads of captured enemy leaders to demoralize their opponents and hasten their surrender. Unlike many of their contemporaries, the Assyrians maintained a large professional standing army that was always ready for battle. This enabled them to respond rapidly to threats and to project their power across the vast expanse of their empire. The Assyrian military made extensive use of cavalry and chariots, which allowed them to exploit the mobility and speed of these units to their advantage on the battlefield. Assyrian cavalry and charioteers were renowned for their skill and ferocity, striking fear into the hearts of their enemies. The Assyrians developed efficient logistical systems to keep their armies supplied on campaign. They built roads and bridges to facilitate the movement of troops and supplies, and they established supply depots and granaries in strategic locations to ensure that their forces were always well provisioned. Assyrian soldiers were rigorously trained from a young age, instilling in them a strong sense of discipline and loyalty to the empire. This training, combined with their advanced weaponry and tactics, made the Assyrian army a formidable force on the battlefield. The Assyrian military was not only the foundation of the empire's success, but also an instrument of terror, used to suppress revolts and intimidate potential adversaries. The Assyrians' military prowess and innovations played a critical role in their rise to power and their ability to maintain control over their vast territories. The Assyrian Empire, once a dominant power in the ancient Near East, eventually succumbed to a combination of internal and external factors that led to its decline and fall. The following factors contributed to the disintegration of this once mighty empire. Overextension and revolts. As the Assyrian Empire expanded, it became increasingly difficult to maintain control over its vast territories. Rebellions and uprisings were common, particularly in the more distant provinces. The Assyrians relied heavily on their fearsome military to suppress these revolts, but this strategy stretched their resources thin and left the empire vulnerable to external threats. The cost of maintaining a large standing army, as well as the construction of grand palaces, temples and other monumental structures, placed a significant financial burden on the empire. This burden was further exacerbated by the need to fund expensive military campaigns to suppress revolts and defend the empire's borders. This financial strain weakened the Assyrian economy and made it more susceptible to external shocks, internal strife and political instability. Succession disputes and infighting among the Assyrian elite led to periods of political instability and weakened the central authority of the empire. This instability made it more difficult for the Assyrians to respond effectively to external threats and to maintain control over their territories. Environmental factors. Some scholars argue that environmental factors, such as droughts and famines, contributed to the decline of the Assyrian Empire. These natural disasters would have strained the empire's already weakened economy and disrupted its agricultural base, further exacerbating the challenges faced by the Assyrians. The Assyrian Empire faced increasing pressure from external powers, such as the Medes, Babylonians and Scythians. As the Assyrians struggled to maintain control over their territories and suppress internal revolts, 
These external powers sensed an opportunity to challenge Assyrian dominance. In 612 BCE, the Babylonians and Medes formed a coalition and laid siege to the Assyrian capital of Nineveh, ultimately capturing the city and dealing a devastating blow to the Assyrian Empire. The final collapse. After the fall of Nineveh, the Assyrians attempted to regroup and establish a new capital at Haran. However, the empire was too weakened to withstand the continued onslaught from its enemies. In 609 BCE, the Babylonians and Medes captured Haran, marking the end of the Assyrian Empire as a political and military power. The decline and fall of the Assyrian Empire were the result of a complex interplay of internal and external factors. The empire's overextension, economic strain, political instability and environmental challenges weakened its foundations, while the rise of powerful external adversaries ultimately led to its collapse. The fall of the Assyrian Empire marked the end of an era and paved the way for the rise of new powers in the ancient Near East, such as the Babylonians and the Persians. The Anunnaki, a group of deities in ancient Mesopotamian religions, played a significant role in shaping the beliefs and culture of the Assyrians, who were one of the dominant civilizations of the ancient Near East. The connection between the Assyrians and the Anunnaki can be seen in various aspects of their society, including their religion, art and literature. The Assyrian religion, like that of other Mesopotamian cultures, was deeply influenced by the worship of the Anunnaki. These gods and goddesses were believed to have created humanity and were responsible for the natural world, as well as for human society and its institutions. Key Anunnaki deities such as Enlil, Ea and Anu were central to the Assyrians, and their worship was an essential part of religious life. Assyrian kings claimed to rule by the divine mandate of the Anunnaki, who were believed to have appointed them as their earthly representatives. This divine connection was used to legitimize the rule of the Assyrian kings and to justify their military conquests. Assyrian kings were often depicted in art and literature as receiving the blessing or guidance of the Anunnaki, further reinforcing the idea that their rule was divinely ordained. The influence of the Anunnaki can be seen in the art and iconography of the Assyrian Empire. Depictions of Anunnaki deities are found on Assyrian palace reliefs, sculptures and other artifacts often alongside images of the Assyrian king. The winged disc, a symbol associated with the sun god Shamash, another member of the Anunnaki, was a common motif in Assyrian art and was often used as a symbol of divine protection and authority. The Anunnaki featured prominently in Assyrian literature and mythology, which was heavily influenced by earlier Sumerian and Akkadian sources. Stories of the Anunnaki, such as the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian creation myth and the Epic of Gilgamesh were known and revered by the Assyrians, who often incorporated these tales into their own literary works and inscriptions. As we delve into the intriguing world of the Assyrians, we find a civilization marked by exceptional achievements and indelible ties to the ancient Anunnaki deities. Their divine mandate provided a foundation for the Assyrian Empire's rise to prominence, fueling their military conquests and shaping their cultural expressions. Yet despite their numerous accomplishments, the Assyrians ultimately succumbed to a combination of internal and external pressures that led to their empire's decline and fall. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the Maya civilization, it is not uncommon for alternative theories and speculations to arise. One such theory suggests a potential connection between the Maya and the Anunnaki, a race of extraterrestrial beings from ancient Mesopotamian mythology. According to some proponents of this theory, the Anunnaki may have visited Earth in the distant past, sharing their knowledge of astronomy, mathematics and architecture with the Maya and other ancient civilizations. Welcome to life's biggest questions. Now let's continue this journey, shall we? As we explore the architectural marvels of ancient civilizations, it becomes evident that there is a fascinating link between the pyramids of Egypt and the Mayan temples of Mesoamerica. Although separated by vast distances and distinct cultural backgrounds, these magnificent structures share several intriguing similarities that continue to captivate the curiosity of scholars and enthusiasts alike. One of the most apparent connections between the pyramids and Mayan temples is their stepped pyramid form. Both the Egyptian pyramids, such as the Great Pyramid of Giza, and the Mayan temples, like the Temple of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza, feature a tiered design with a series of platforms leading to a summit. 
This distinct shape is thought to have served both practical and symbolic purposes, providing a stable base for the structure while also representing a stairway to the heavens, connecting the earthly realm with the divine. Another link between the pyramids and Mayan temples is their alignment with celestial phenomena. Both civilizations demonstrated a profound understanding of astronomy, and this knowledge was incorporated into the design and orientation of their monumental structures. For instance, the pyramids of Giza are aligned with the stars of Orion's belt, while the temple of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza is designed to create a shadow serpent during the equinoxes. These alignments reflect the significance of celestial events in the religious and cultural beliefs of both the ancient Egyptians and the Maya. The construction techniques employed by both the Egyptians and the Maya also share some similarities. While the specific methods and materials used by each civilization were distinct, both cultures relied on locally available resources such as limestone to create their monumental structures. Additionally, both the Egyptians and the Maya developed ingenious methods for transporting and placing massive stone blocks, allowing them to create some of the most iconic architectural wonders of the ancient world. The Maya civilization's astronomical prowess extended well beyond the creation of the Long Count calendar. Their impressive understanding of celestial movements allowed them to track the cycles of the Moon, Venus and other celestial bodies with exceptional accuracy. The Maya even developed sophisticated methods for predicting solar and lunar eclipses. Their complex calendar system, which included the Long Count calendar, the Zolkin and the Harb, is indicative of the Maya's profound connection to the cosmos. These calendars, when interlinked, provided the Maya with a comprehensive method for tracking both sacred and secular time, and they were used to plan religious ceremonies, agricultural activities, and other essential aspects of Mayan life. While there is no concrete evidence to support this claim, the idea of ancient astronauts continues to captivate the imagination and fuel the search for further connections between the Maya and the cosmos. However, it is crucial to recognize that the Maya civilization's impressive achievements are the result of their own ingenuity and dedication to understanding the natural world around them. As we continue to explore the world of the Mayan pyramids, we are reminded of the remarkable capabilities of human civilizations and their unyielding pursuit of knowledge. The significance of the ball court in Mayan society cannot be understated. These architecturally impressive structures were often built at the heart of Mayan cities, serving not only as venues for the ritualistic ball games, but also as social and political centers where people would gather to witness the spectacle. The design of the ball court varied between cities, but most shared some common features. A typical ball court consisted of an elongated parallel walled playing field, flanked by sloping walls that allowed the ball to rebound back into the field. Stone rings, sometimes adorned with intricate carvings, were mounted high on the walls, presenting a challenging target for the players. The ball game played in these courts, known as pits, held deep religious and symbolic significance for the Maya. The game was believed to be a reenactment of the mythological battle between the hero twins and the lords of the underworld, as recounted in the Popol Vuh, a sacred text of the Maya. By participating in the game, the players were reenacting this cosmic struggle between the forces of life and death, ensuring the continued balance of the universe. The stakes of these games were incredibly high. The players, often members of the elite, would compete not only for prestige and social standing, but also in some cases for their very lives. It is believed that in certain instances, the losing team, or even the captain of the losing team, could be subjected to human sacrifice. This brutal practice further underscores the deep connection between sport, religion and the maintenance of cosmic order in Mayan society. The ball court and the game of pits are prime examples of the intricate web of connections that permeated Mayan culture, linking architecture, sport and religious beliefs in a complex tapestry. The Mayan civilization's construction techniques were highly advanced for their time, employing ingenious methods and materials that allowed them to create some of the most iconic architectural marvels of the ancient world. The Mayan temples, with their distinct stepped pyramid form, were built using locally available materials such as limestone and were often adorned with intricate carvings and stucco reliefs that depicted scenes from mythology, history and daily life. One of the key features of Mayan construction was the use of the corbel arch. 
a false arch technique that enabled the builders to create vaulted ceilings and passageways without the need for traditional arches or domes. The corbel arch was formed by gradually overlapping layers of stones on either side of a passageway, with each successive layer projecting slightly inward until the layers met at the top, creating a vaulted ceiling. This technique allowed for the construction of impressive interior spaces, while using relatively simple construction methods and materials. In addition to the corbel arch, the Maya were known for their skill in creating massive stone platforms upon which their temples and other structures were built. These platforms were constructed using a technique known as cellular masonry, in which a series of stone cells or compartments were filled with earth and rubble, creating a solid, stable base for the structures above. The layout and orientation of Mayan temples were often influenced by the civilization's deep understanding of astronomy and celestial alignments. Many temples were designed to align with specific celestial events, such as solstices, equinoxes, and the rise and set of specific stars or constellations. This integration of astronomy into architecture further underscores the profound connection between the Maya's spiritual beliefs and their understanding of the cosmos. The Mayan temples were not only architectural masterpieces, but also served important religious, political, and social functions. They often housed sacred relics, served as the burial sites for rulers and elites, and were the focal points for ceremonies and rituals that were central to the life of the Maya. The construction techniques employed by the Maya, along with their skillful integration of art, architecture, and astronomy, have left us with a rich and enduring legacy that continues to captivate and inspire those who seek to unravel the mysteries of this ancient civilization. The collapse of the Maya civilization remains one of the most intriguing puzzles in the study of ancient cultures. Between the 8th and 9th centuries CE, the once great Mayan cities were gradually abandoned, and the civilization that had flourished for centuries began to decline. Scholars have proposed various theories to explain this collapse, with factors such as overpopulation, warfare, disease, and environmental degradation potentially playing a role. One of the most widely accepted theories attributes the collapse of the Maya civilization to a combination of environmental and societal factors. Prolonged periods of drought and climate change would have put immense pressure on the Maya's agricultural system, leading to food shortages and social unrest. As the population grew, the need for intensive agriculture would have led to widespread deforestation and soil erosion, exacerbating the effects of climate change and further straining the civilization's resources. In addition to these environmental challenges, the Maya civilization was also plagued by internal strife and warfare. The competing city-states were often embroiled in conflicts over resources, territory and political power. As the environmental conditions deteriorated, these conflicts likely intensified, further destabilizing the region and contributing to the decline of the Maya. Another contributing factor to the collapse of the Maya civilization may have been the spread of disease. While the specific diseases that may have affected the Maya are not known, it is likely that the crowded urban centers, combined with the stress of environmental and social pressures, would have created conditions ripe for the spread of infectious diseases. Epidemics could have decimated the population and further weakened the already fragile society. The collapse of the Maya civilization serves as a poignant reminder of the complex interplay between environmental, social and political factors that can contribute to the decline of a once great culture. As we continue to study the mysteries of the Maya and their remarkable achievements, we gain valuable insights into the resilience, adaptability and fragility of human civilizations, and we are reminded of the need to balance our pursuit of progress with a respect for the delicate balance of the natural world upon which we depend.